The webinar will go for around 20 minutes um, and we're going to talk about creating your family history album, something important to pass on to your children and your grandchildren. Well, depending on your history, it might also be a book of significance to state libraries or historical societies, that kind of thing. I'm going to look at scanning your photos, deciding how to categorise your photos, choosing your theme and product type, adding your photos and text to the page and enhancing your page to get the best effects. So let's get started. First of all, scanning your photos. So chances are if you're making a family history, you're going to have lots of old photos to scan. Scan photos turn out well in the final product as long as they're scanned at a high enough resolution. Firstly, make sure the photos are free of dust or dirt, otherwise these imperfections will show in the printed album. You may also need to crop your photos after scanning them to ensure there's no white edges around them. If you have the computer resources, it is beneficial to scan your photos at a high DPI value of 600. This will allow you plenty of freedom when deciding how large you want to display your photos in your album. However, it does take longer to do each scan at this resolution. So for photos that you might only want to take up a small part of a page, you're still safe to scan them at 300 DPI, but not lower than that. Please don't scan at higher than 600 DPI as it won't improve the print quality, but it will slow down your computer and could cause problems when uploading because the file sizes will become very large. So as you can see in this slide, um, you need to set your resolution to 300 DPI. You do this on your scanner, 300 or 600. Um, and you also need to save the files as JPEG images. So it says down the bottom format, make sure you choose JPEG. Our editor does not accept PDFs or bitmap files. So next you need to decide in what order you want to display your history. So for this type of album, I mean, normally chronological order makes the most sense. Uh, you may want to start with some information about the area or region that the family comes from. Uh, then perhaps you could include a family tree or some diagrams. And from there, you might look at each family member and talk about their, their early life, their marriage, family, um, career, that sort of thing. So you need to have a think about how you want to tell your story before you get started. And everyone's going to be a little bit different um, of, of how you present it. Once you've worked that out, try to sort your photos into folders on your computer that make sense to you. If you do this before you start, it'll be a lot easier creating your album. So I'll give you an example. On my computer, I've got, um, I've created a folder for, for my family tree. And inside that folder, I've created subfolders. So I've picked out already a photo that I want for the cover. Um, I have Palmerston North, which is the area where the family's from, and then the, pa the parents of the family, and then Joe, Joe's, who's my father, his early life and career and marriage, those sorts of things. Um, I've also found some documentation on Far Palmerston North, um, which I've got in a Word document, and a family tree here. So. Um, you'll need to sort yours out to suit your family. <laughs> um, once you've done that, you want to open up our editor and you want to start a new project. <clears throat> so once you're in here, you can choose either a classic photo book or a lay flat photo book. Lay flat um, could be useful if you've got if some uh, charts and things that, that are quite big with your family tree and you might want to put them over a double page spread. That sort of thing is useful, but that given you're probably going to have quite a few pages that it will, the book will be heavier because the pages are much heavier in a lay flat book. I'm going to choose a classic book for now because that's going to suit me. In terms of themes, um, you can start completely from scratch and design your pages on your own, in which case you choose the build your own theme. However, we do also have a specific family history theme and it's the last one in the list. So I'm gonna choose the family history. I'm gonna click on next. In terms of size for your album, um, it is up to you. Personally, I like the 12 by 12 inch size as it's nice and big, but it's not too large to make it uncomfortable to hold. 
um, it's, it's about 30 by 30 centimetres, so the size of a ruler in each direction. Being a square format, it gives you lots of flexibility in how to lay out your photos and text as well. But you might prefer a landscape book, you might, um, might like 11 by 8.5 inch, or if you want to go really large, a 16 by 12 inch is the, the biggest size. Okay, so I'm going to choose the 12 by 12 square photo cover. Um, you can have a material cover if you prefer, and you could have um, you could choose a, a buckram or, or faux leather and have a title on it. I'm going to choose a photo cover because I have a, a nice family photo that I want to include on the cover with some text. So I'll choose that one. Uh, next is going to ask me to add my photos. For now, I'm just going to add my cover photo if it lets me. Okay, computer, add individual photos and let's go into, sorry, that's not the right place. We want to go into documents, uh, webinar photos and cover. I'm just going to add my cover photo for now and I'll show you how, you don't want to have too many photos at once because otherwise you get a bit lost with what you're doing. We'll click next and we'll give it a name. Um, We'll create. So that's going to open up in a minute um, and we'll be able to start creating the book. And this is, you know, obviously this is where you need to start deciding how you want to present your photos on the page. Um, everyone's going to be different how they do it and you might, you'll have your own ideas of how you want to do it. But I'm going to just give you a few ideas here. Uh, so I've got my cover photo here. I'm going to add that to the page just by dragging it there. It doesn't fit very well with this page style that's on there. So I'm going to try this other page style that we have down the bottom, which is this one. I'm just going to drag that onto the page and look, it fits perfectly. My photo fits nicely on the front cover. Um, now, one thing with this type of book, particularly because you have old photos, it's going to be really important to use the auto enhance feature, which we have in the editor. You click on your photo, um, on the right hand side you click on the um, arrows here and there's a button that says auto enhance and you'll see, have a look at the photo when I tick it, have a look at the difference it makes, it's really brightened it up. So especially with old scanned photos this is going to make a big difference to you. Um, I could keep it with a white background, but I actually think a black background will look nice for this cover. So I'm oh, sorry, I should have pointed that out. You click on the paint can, I can choose the front cover to be black, spine to be black, and the back cover to be black. Um, I also think for this one, it would be nice to have a border around my photo just to enhance it a little bit. So I'm going to add a border and I'm going to make it white. So you'll just see now when I click out of it, it's just a very simple cover. Um, I'm going to add some text because I want to put the name of the family. So I'm going to just put um, now it is in black at the moment, so that's why you can't see it. So I've just highlighted that text and I'm going to change it over here to white. It's very small and this is a cover. So actually I'm going to change the font. Um, you might want to choose a nice fancy font if you like, or you may prefer something that's readable. Brush script is a bit fancy uh, and I'm going to make it a 48 point font just so that it's readable. Um, and of course I want to, I'll just make this edge of the box smaller and I'm going to pop it in the middle here so that it's nice and easy to read. So very simple but classic, really easy to uh, look at. Um, I quite like how this appears. Next, let's go inside the book and see what we can do there. Oh, sorry, on the back cover you could just add a couple of photos there if you, if you have some. Um, on my first page, I'm going to do talk a little bit about Palmerston North, the place where my the family's from. So I'm going to add a photo from my computer. Um, I actually have one photo here of Palmer's North of the house where my grandparents lived. <clears throat> now uh, that this 
page style is not going to suit what I want so I'm going to swap it over for another one and for me I think this one is going to look good I'm going to drag that photo onto the page um, what I'm going to do actually though is move it to the bottom because I've got some text that I want to put in oops that'll do close enough um, if I want it to go to the edge of the page it needs to go to the blue line at the bottom so to add text um, I'm going to put again at the top, I'll just put Smith family history and you know I can make that bigger as well if I want to, I'll just make it 22 for now and you, again you can change the font. Um, I have a whole paragraph, a couple of paragraphs of text I want to add but I have them in a Word document and you'll probably have the same, you might have um, information in a Word document. So to um, add that Word document in. I add a text box first of all. I'll just make put it up here. I'll make it a bit bigger because I want to be able to fit all my text in. And I have open a Word document with some text about Palmerston North. So I'm just going to highlight all of that text. I'm going to copy it. So if you're on a Windows computer, Control C or Mac uh, Command C. And I'm going to go back to my book, double click into my text box and I'm going to paste, control V to paste and there it is. Um, I'm going to put, there's a paragraph here so I'll just add a paragraph there. So it actually doesn't take up as much room as I wanted. Um, I could make it a bit bigger if I want just by changing this size. Oh, it's a bit slow but we'll change the size to 14, make it a bit bigger. And um, I could even move my photo up a little bit, there we go. So that that could just be your front page. Um, very simple, just tells you a bit about the family. Um, with this photo, I would again definitely auto enhance it and you'll see how nicely it brings it out. Uh, the other thing, just on a note, with if you have some colour photos and you might want to make them black and white, you can do that here as well. There's mode says original, I can change it to black and white or I can change it to sepia if I prefer that kind of look for, for an, a special effect. Uh, so next, we'll go to the next page and then we're going to start um, putting our, our um, other photos in. I, I do have a family tree so I'm going to add that in here. Um, if I don't want what's on the page I can just click on each box and delete, press delete on your keyboard and they'll go away just to get rid of them. Um, I'm going to add my family tree which is here and I'm just going to pop it on the page and I need to make it bigger. Um, you can click right click on it and say fit and fit to page is a little bit big so I'm going to have to um, I'm losing some of it so we'll just I'm just double clicking on it to crop it and we'll just make sure we get it all in oops that's still not big enough so I'll have to make my um, frame a bit smaller there right that fits now so there it is on the page um, that's just a very simple family history chart. You, you guys might have more complicated ones. This one was taken from Family Tree Maker, but there are lots of ancestry programs um, that, that you guys probably know more about than I do. Um, and you, could, you can edit it. You can, even if you want to add um, like arrows or lines, you can insert a shape and you can insert a line on the page. So you might want to, you know, even if you want to create one in here, you could add lines and sort of move it a bit tricky, but you can point to people and or maybe add a photo to say who that person is, that sort of thing. Um, so it is quite flexible. Right, so I finish with these photos. I'm actually going to clear my picture list so that I can move on to the next lot of photos. So click on this cog and say clear picture list and they're gone. They don't need to be in that list once you've put them in the book because the, the, they'll be sourced from the file path on your computer where those photos are. Let's add a new folder. Um, this time we're going to add 
Noel and Anne, and we'll add them. Uh, we've just got one single photo, so this is pretty similar to what I've shown you already. Um, I'm just going to use a basic photo. I'll start showing you some ways to enhance these photos and, and enhance your page. So um, you can add backgrounds to the page. Here's a back, um, the background list. Most of them are quite colourful. You might want something a bit old fashioned. There's a few old fashioned ones here. There's this one or there's this one, which I'm not a big fan of because <laughs> but some people might like it. Um, or you can just add a plain background. So if you keep going down the list, oh, actually you can click on plain. Um, you might just add a plain grey background or um, there's one here that's quite sort of earthy or you know, old fashioned, that, that sort of background. Um, and the other thing that might look good on this particular photo is a mask. So we have a list of masks here and you could add a mask, say something like this. I think it was this one that I quite like. Uh, or if, whoop, that, that's probably losing a bit of their heads. Um, but when you put a mask, it just adds a bit of um, texture to the, to the image something like that might be nice. Um, that, that's definitely an option. I'll show you some other features coming up. So say let's go to the next page. I'm now going to go to my next folder of photos and we're going to look at um, Joe early years. We'll add those photos on here. Um, now the other thing is so if, if I'm not sure what page style I want to use, um, what you can do is put your photos, work out which photos you want on the page and then you can add a page style that's going to fit. So I'll just move these out of our way. So I've got this photo, this one, uh, this one, uh, this one and I think there was one more single one. Yeah, so I've got five photos that I might want to use. What I can do is look down the bottom to find one that's got five boxes and this one here actually looks quite right. So I'll just pop that on the page and it does it for me. It puts them all into those boxes all ready to go. Um, again, every with this family history album, every page has a text box so you can add text I can say Joe as a boy um, and that's easy enough to do. Uh, you might want to start adding frames to your page. So if you click on this frames tab, uh, there are some good ones here. These, these are really simple ones, but they make it look quite old fashioned. I quite like this. The other one you might want to use is the Polaroid photo. So this one here brings it up like a Polaroid and you can even put your text underneath like that. So there's different ways you can do it but those are probably the frames I would use. There are some other ones, some of the wedding ones actually aren't bad for this sort of thing, this this one here and um, that one there. Uh, it, again you can vary it how you like. The other, on the opposite page I have got two photos I'm going to use so I'm just going to, actually what you can just pop them in it doesn't you can pop them on the page, it doesn't matter. And this one, and I just want a simple two page, two photos for the page. I don't know if there actually is one that suits me, so I can create my own. I'm just going to use this page style, uh, and that deleted my other photo. Actually, that's not the one I wanted because it's a bit uh, low quality, so I'll have to make that that one's smaller if I want to use it. No, it was this photo here, so I'll just drag that there. Um, so I want to put another photo underneath it. What I can do is copy this one, so Control C and paste, and it creates a copy of that photo. And then I can just drag the photo I do want to use into that box, and I've got my two photos there. I'm just going to align them a little bit. Um, and then I can put my text, I can move them over maybe. Um, so, so if you want to move two photos at the same time, click on one of them, hold down your shift key, click on the other one and it highlights both. They've got, both got blue dots around the edges. You can then move them both further over if that's how I want them. And 
the same applies with auto enhancing. So when you've got, if you've got a whole lot of photos on a page and you want to auto enhance them all together, hold down shift and click on all the photos on the page, go to your auto enhance and click on it and it will do all the photos at the same time. So they're all done. Um, so that's quite useful. The other thing I was going to show you are vignettes, which are nice on this type of book. So say I want to put a vignette on these two photos, the vignettes appear here and I click on this button and it adds a coloured um, outline to the photo. You can in, make it bigger or smaller, so you can do a really big one or quite a small one if you prefer and you can change how blurry it is, make it more blurry, less blurry, some people quite, that's quite nice too. Um, you can change the colour as well, but I think black would suit those ones. Um, so that's quite a few things that you can do with the book. Just trying to think what else I was going to show you. I think that's pretty much it. Um, frames I've shown you. There are some scrapbooking items, oops, sorry, that you can use. I prefer not to so much for this type of book because um, I think scrapbooking books, uh, things are more for modern books, but there's certainly ones that you could use. For example, this one may work. Um, look, you might use it if you've got a page on a wedding or something like that, it's useful to do. Um, I'll just say, show you one more, I'll do one more page just to show you something else. I have a photo of, um, so the next thing I would do is go to career and I might want to talk about uh, Joe's career. So I'll add a photo here and it's just one photo, but I want it to take up the whole page. There is a page style that is good for this. So I'm going to drag as soon as my computer thinks, I'm going to drag this page style on and it's put it perfectly on the page. I can add text and talk about Joe's career. So you can just continue on like that. Um, but yeah, using backgrounds and, and etc. can help you enhance your pages. All right, um, the other thing I was going to say is, yeah, just keep it simple. The, you don't need to complicate things. Um, again, you want to concentrate on your storytelling. This is something I always talk about. So. Um, don't, don't worry too much. All right, that's all we've got time for today. Um, before, so if you've got any questions, just send them through now. And while you're doing that, I'll just do a quick recap of what we've talked about. So the first thing is just with your scanning, make sure you scan your photos at a high resolution of 300 to 600 DPI. Um, work out how you want to present your photos in the book. Um, decide on your theme and your product type and then add your photos to the album. If you want, you can add them all at the start and then use your backgrounds, masks, frames, vignettes, etc., to enhance the pages. You might do it as you go or at the end. And don't forget, really important to auto enhance your photos because that's going to give you the best results, especially with old photos. Rightio, let's check if there are any questions. So um, I'm just going to just bear with me for a moment and we'll see what there is. Okay, somebody's asked whether it's a good idea to use high definition um, printing for this type of book. The Look, it's always good to use high definition if you can afford to. Um, it, it will uh, give you a better print quality. Um, with old photos, you're not going to get as much benefit from high definition as you would with high, with high res digital colour photos um, because they are firstly they're old they're not going to be the same quality and you you know the colour one of the benefits of high definition is the colour so keep that in mind but yeah if you can afford it you you still will get a better result. Um, all right someone <laughs> has asked if um, the, the, one of the tricky things is sorting out all the family photos and whether we've got tips on that look that is the trickiest bit and I think just you, you've got to be ruthless, I guess, and you just want to present each family member or, um, you know, don't, don't use hundreds and thousands of photos because it's going to get too big. Just keep it simple. Um, and, you know, if you don't have a lot of text to say, you could just put 
a bit of text under each photo and just say who it is or where it is, that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, that's the trickiest is sorting out your photos and unfortunately I can't help with that. <laughs> um, and actually the same person said they have an Apple. You can certainly do all of this on a, an Apple Mac. Um, you just need to sort your photos, put them somewhere on your computer in a folder and um, as, as you saw on my screen, try and set up individual photos for each part of the book to make it easier for you. Maybe even write down a plan, um, go back to school and write down a plan of what you want to do. All right, uh, that's all the questions we have. Um, so just want to finish off by reminding you that um, you can call our customer service team if you need any help along the way. We're here Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Melbourne time. Our phone number is 1300 553 448. You can also reach us by email at service at albumworks.com.au or you can talk to us via live chat from our website.